If you spend any time around here, there's a good chance that all you've seen us talk about are $8,000 mountain bikes and anything made of carbon fiber. But it doesn't have to be that way and you don't need any of that stuff to have a good time or even an okay time. And that's especially true if we're talking about clothing and protection. Yes, I know Casimir reviewed a $450 jacket last year, but we're about to make amends for my intern's blunder. Today is all about where to spend and where to save on mountain bike clothing. First up on my where to save list, it's jerseys. Now you could easily spend $60 or more, even as much as a couple hundred dollars on a jersey. My advice is to just go with a poly cotton blend shirt instead of a straight cotton t-shirt. If you're doing long rides or any rides, you'll feel way less gross in one of those once you start sweating. And if you have one of those fancy Lululemon tech tees, well, they work great too, but you could find much less expensive versions out there as well. For colder weather, head to your Costco or your local inexpensive department store and look for a relatively inexpensive merino long sleeve. They're gonna do very well in the cold weather. Next up, we're gonna talk about where to spend and it's shorts and pants. And I know that every single town has some ripper in it who destroys everybody while wearing cut off jean shorts. But here in the real world, we don't recommend going down that road. And yes, I know the local Walmart has $7 swimming trunks that you could use as well, but let me tell you why that's not a good idea. Have you ever caught the crotch of your low hanging shorts on the nose of your seat only to get scorpioned over the handlebar so hard that your eyes don't stop rattling for like 10 minutes? Me neither, <laughs> but it sucks. <laughs> My recommendation, spending about $80 will get you a pair of quality, long lasting mountain bike shorts that'll fit properly but I wouldn't rule out buying used as long as they're in good shape and you can check them out before you pay money for them. Use chamois though, maybe not. Maybe not. All right, back to where to save and it's hip packs. Now I'm a big fan of hip packs because they are way less obtrusive than a giant big old backpack, but I also have self-respect, so I'm not gonna wear one. I can understand why Casimir does though, even when he's not enduroing, they make so much sense. Now that said, you definitely don't need to spend a hundred or more dollars on a hip pack. Dekine and many other companies, they offer hip bags around the $20 mark. And if you wanna spend even less, check out the travel section in your inexpensive department store. Sometimes they have small, elastic, very lightweight hip packs that you could put up underneath a jersey. So where to save hip packs, you could spend over a hundred dollars easily. My recommendation, 20 bucks or less. Where to spend again, and it's knee pads. Now, the only answer here is to buy the knee pads that offer the protection and the comfort that you need. After all, if they don't offer that, if they're not comfortable, you're not gonna wear them, and then what's the point? Well, you can hang them on that chin-up bar that you bought a few years ago. Now, knee pads, they're gonna cost what they're gonna cost because of that, and if you want some that offer serious protection, you're looking at at least $80 American and up. Let's keep it on where to spend. We're talking helmets next. That old line about all helmets being just as safe as all the other helmets because they all have to pass the same test. No, do not think like that. You're shopping for your brain, people. My recommendation is to spend $100 or more and look for something with some sort of rotational protection. Giro's Chronicle MIPS equipped helmet, well, it just got a five out of five star rating at that Virginia Tech test which is pretty interesting, but there are a whole bunch of other options out there. My recommendation is to spend around $100 on a quality helmet that you can ensure fits you properly. And if you wanna spend more, well, you get lighter helmets with more holes. They let in more air, so maybe they won't be so warm on hot days. As for buying used, just, just don't. Don't buy any used helmets, ever. No matter what anybody says, it's never a good idea. And always replace your helmet too. You should definitely replace your helmet when you hit it. Next up, it's wear to save and it is eyewear. Now I think I would need four or five hands to count the number of times that I thought I was permanently blinded by something flying up into my eye or a branch getting in there. Now I wear glasses almost every ride and I recommend you do the same. You certainly don't need the latest high-end douche goggles with mirrored lenses to do the job. But having said that, spending more money definitely gets you better optics and that's important. 
But $200? No, just no. There are other options out there. My advice, definitely don't buy those $10 pair of sick looking shades from the gas station. Instead, you're gonna to wanna to spend 30 to $60 American for some higher quality glasses from a company like Riders or another brand that offer good optics that'll work for mountain biking. Another $10 will get you an anti-fog wipe that'll help keep your vision clear when the temperatures are down and it's raining. Next up, where to save, and it's definitely on gloves. Quick question for you, are you a hand model? No? then you don't need to spend a ton of money on a pair of gloves with a ton of protection. To be honest with you guys, if companies didn't send us gloves to wear, I would top out at around $20 because they all seem to fall apart just as quickly. They all seem to rip or tear. So my advice, spend around $20 on a pair of budget gloves that meet your need from the local bike shop. All right, where to spend some money and it's on shoes. You can definitely go shredding in your new balances, but shoes, whether you're wearing clipless or platform pedal style shoes, are a super important contact point with your bike. So you don't want them to be shitty. You want a pair of shoes that are comfortable and that meet your needs. If you're using platform pedals, an inexpensive skate shoe will do the job, especially if your pedal is grippy. But you're far better off looking for an inexpensive mountain bike shoe designed specifically for platform pedals. And the reason is the rubber sole is way grippier. The grip of your sole gives you more traction. It'll keep your feet from blowing off the pedals and the pedals from coming around and carving huge gouges in the front of your shins. Never good. On top of that, proper mountain bike shoes, they also offer way more protection and they'll also last a long, long time. I have a pair of 510s that I think are like eight years old. So might be worth the money. Spend $100 or more on a good pair of platform pedal shoes. If you're clipping in, a good set of value shoes will cost $100 or more. You can spend less than that, but there's definitely some questionable reliability there. Also, you need to make sure that the sole is stiff enough to meet your needs. If you have a tiny pedal, the sole will need to be stiffer, of course. And also, don't rule out buying used as long as you can check them out and make sure they're in good shape. So, shoes, my recommendation, $100 or more, and check out used. All right, everybody, there you have it. There is where to spend and where to save on mountain bike clothing for a trail rider. Let us know where we nailed it and let us know where we dropped the ball. Did you guys have another recommendation? Did I not make any sense when I was talking about glasses and gloves? Let us know. I have one more recommendation for you. I wear bib shorts around all the time with the pockets in the back, even when I'm not riding just because it's super convenient. You could put your wallet in there. You could put your keys in there. If you have some candy, you could put some candy in there, your phone, and then you can just walk around and nobody knows it's there. It makes a lot of sense. The straps also keep my nips down too, which is nice. That's it.